fossil fish. How old is it? Is it millions of years old? Or is it relatively young? That's the question. How fast does it take to form? How fast does rock, alluvial, I'm talking um, sedimentary rock, are you already uh, yawning? Well, not in my class, because I'll tell you what, earth science was boring in, what was it, ninth grade or whatever, but not this kind of world science, or not this kind of uh, earth science, because we're delving into not only the natural, but the supernatural. We're asking the question whether or not we came from rained on rocks three and a half billion years ago through natural processes. So we, we went from a proto RNA to the magnificent people that we are today. Or did we come through special creation where someone took the time to mold us, our first parents, out of the dust of the ground, the mud, and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Which is it? Well, one part of that scenario is this thing called the worldwide flood. And there are two theories. The theory is, is that everything was formed geologically over long periods of time. Or that there was a very intense, multifaceted, meaning that there were mul different types of geological processes going on all at the same time on a level that we would n just completely blow our minds for about a year. That's the worldwide flood. We're not talking about six weeks of rain. Yes, there was that. But we're talking about tsunamis, earthquakes, probably some meteors. We're also talking about the flood coming up, sloshing around for another five months before it even started to go down some. There's a lot that can be done. If you've seen any of these flood videos or tsunami videos, you can see how destructive just a few feet of water, whether it be five or ten feet of water coming inland, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, the firmament, exactly. So anyways, what we, I want to stay on track here, and I appreciate you guys asking questions and making statements, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, to zero in on you tonight as much as I would love to, but I am going to show you a few things. Now, initially, a couple of several, about in the last couple of weeks, we came out with a video, you may re recognize this, where we said, hey, rock can form quickly sedimentary rock. This is an iron pipe that's from Kalavi Veri in the Czech Republic. They have very, very mineralized water there. And when it goes through there in 80 years, this is what happens. Three quarters of an inch of aragonite. Now people sit there and say, well, that's not stone. Or, well, come on. It may not be a rock in your backyard, but how do you think sandstone was formed? Oh, different process. Come on, it's sand pressed together into a rock, okay? And limestone, limestone is little itty bitty uh, skeletons from the sea crushed together and then put together in, in, a, in a rock. And what's coal? Coal is bark and, uh, and, and, and uh, vegetable matter heated and pressed so that it becomes coal. Slate, same thing. It's all done through water action and pressure and heat. So what we did was we established with more than just this, okay, that rock can form quickly. Great. That doesn't mean the rock is old. I get it. And people were there quick to point that out. And even the critics of our conclusion that we come to in this discussion they still would say, but we already knew that. We already knew that rock could form quickly. What's wrong with you? Thank you, uh, M Michael. Appreciate the TikTok something or others. <laughs> so rock, I'm going to say that rock can form quickly, and I don't think there's going to be too many people that will disagree with that. But, okay. How about fossils? Do they form quickly? You see this little bad boy right here? It started off looking something like this. And then it turned into this. 
How long does it take this to turn into this? Well, we get the impression because rock is very old that the fossil and fossilization, well, the fossil's old and the fossilization is, takes a long time, right? Well, consider this for a moment. The detail of this fish that's encapsulated in this, I'm going to try to get it as close as possible. You can see the tiny little bones and the fins and the scales sometimes, a lot of detail there. You can't get that unless you not just bury this, but profoundly bury this. Not all fossils are the same. You're right. You've got different types of fossils out there different types of fossilization. But bear with me, okay? I pr and, and because this is not a, a, a college science course where we have a whole semester to be able to delve into all this, I have to generalize some things and, you know, so. All right. Um, in order to get this to become this, you have to profoundly bury this profoundly. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, is that this has to get buried in such a way that no air can get to it. No microbes can get to it. Of course, no predators can get to it. You know, they did a science experiment. And by the way, if you go online and look up how fossilization takes place, you'll see that it's covered with mud. Got it. I'm not suggesting that it's not. But in a worldwide flood context, it would be covered with mud. And then 12 hours later, you know, as the, as the, the moon and the, and the tides and everything, then another layer of sand and then another layer of mud and then maybe another layer of volcanic ash. And this is all happening within hours, okay? This thing is getting buried quickly. And again, I'll use the word profoundly. It has to. How else are you going to preserve the delicate structure of a fish so that it does not deteriorate before it can go through this process. And I'm going to say that the process is relatively quick as well. So it gets buried profoundly very, very quickly. So nothing can get at it. And then while it's in its foot locker, it goes through a very quick process of substitution or crystallization of those minerals substituting them for the cells or surrounding the cell and then crystallizing around each cell. So that doesn't necessarily mean, though, that this is young or old. It just means that the process is quick. So while everyone was really getting irritated with all of this and because of my claims of saying that rock can form quickly, they said, we know it can form quickly. Dummy. <laughs> And I say, fossils can form quickly. We knew that too, dummy. Like, you, you know, everybody knows this. Oh, no, they don't. And to go out there on the History Channel or National Geographic and to continually pound, pound, pound into our heads that rock can form quickly and fossils most likely form quickly is not really giving the impression that one would want to give if you're going to maintain that the Earth is 4.51 billion years old, that we came from rained on rocks some 3.5 billion years ago in the form of proto-RNA, and that it became us today, and that the fossil record um, you know, begins about 4 billion years ago, but any kind of appreciable life, so to speak, is, starts right around 800 million to a billion years ago. So all that takes place, and that gives you the impression that it slowly evolves. Geology is slow, and only in the last 40, 50 years are we allowing ourselves the opportunity or allowing punctuated catastrophism to enter into the picture. You know, prior to the 80s, if you spoke about catastrophism, even punctuated, localized, you are anathema to the scientific community. Don't you even dare talk about catastrophism because that's creationism and that is fantasy. It's wrong. <laughs> that's true. So what did we do this morning that got everybody even more angry? Let me show you what we did. We took this right here and we said, look, this is from the Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas. Ta-da! 
And this is in limestone, this stuff right here, gorgeous stuff. Nearby, decades before that, and this was taken, by the way, just FYI, this was taken from an actual print at the, uh, the Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose, Texas. We purchased this from their uh, curiosity shop, um, three of them. And they fresh off, it was uh, 2022 is when they did that. And we were just able to get them home because we couldn't take all three of them home when we did. Now, this right here is a cat print. This is an exact replica. Thank you, Marisol. Appreciate the rose. This is a replica of it. Thank you for the roses of this cat print. This cat print was also found in limestone. Now, if these were in varying layers of limestone, you know, and say, oh, they're really not associated with each other. They were in the same area of Glen Rose. This cat print right here was found in limestone. Friends, limestone is a sign of an age in, in the Glen Rose area, 100 million to 108 million years old. But the Cretaceous or the limestone um, era is between 65 million years and 140 million years. What is a cat print doing in limestone? Unless this is a complete hoax. <clears throat> Let's just say it's true. It shouldn't be anywhere near this, nor in limestone, let alone if it was in the similar strata. And I don't know that for, the, for, for sure. So, but it should not be in limestone. Why? Because this cat print, according to paleontologists, is going to be somewhere around a million to two million years old. It can't be in limestone. Limestone is 65 million years old, minimally, unless there's something I'm missing. And this right here in and of itself gets up people upset. This is found in older rock. So it's a sandstone, limestone mix. Pennsylvanian sandstone, they call it. It's older. Let me put it that way. Somewhere in the two to three million year mark, if you go by the standard reckoning of modern day geology. That, my friends, is not a salamander print. That is a hand print. And this is a replica of the original. The original is in Glen Rose, Texas, and this was found nearby. And if that wasn't enough, in the Paluxy, right near where everything else was found, this was found in 1964, in the middle of, they were doing quarrying in the Paluxy area, I'm sorry, the Glen Rose area in the Paluxy River, and these men found this footprint. They cut a four by four foot section and brought it out so that it wouldn't break. It was a couple three. It was several hundred pounds. They someone ended up selling it for eight hundred dollars to some man who put it at the state, uh, the World's Fair in nineteen sixty four, sixty five in New York City. What's amazing about this print is is that it looks too good to be true. This is a second generation replica. For the first time, I was able to look at the first generation replica that was made out of cement. That was a direct imprint of the original print in 1964 and it looked exactly like this so from one from the second generation to the first generation there was no degradation not not really and the cement print that's what they made it out of um was in, was incredible it looked just like this so now you've got a handprint a footprint a paw print, a dinosaur print, all in the same limestone in around the same area. I, doesn't look real. It looks too real, actually. And that's probably the biggest criticism of this, you know, that it looks too real. Let me hold it up like this so you guys can see it without any distortion. It's 16 and a half inches tall. All right. And you've got, do you see that right there? The heel. One, two, three, four, five. Look, even if even if half of these were um, were faked or aren't true, you still have a dinosaur print with a giant paw print. All right. Before I go, I want to give you guys the opportunity to uh, join our text group. If you guys want a little, if you guys like what you're seeing here today, especially those of you that purchased the tiny diny, if you're still on here. 
Um, and if somebody could post this, I appreciate it. Our text line for the United States and Canada only. And what I do is I, I personalize things. I send you guys um, opportunities for free gifts. Um, cool stuff, you know? And also, like, for instance, this live right now, I texted the group of people. There's 248 people on the text group. And you're welcome to join. It's free. And for those of you that do join that, you'll hear from me personally this evening. And I'll just say welcome to the museum text group. And you'll be hearing from us soon. So that's it. All right. Okay. That's it for now. So um, you guys take it easy. I guess we're going to go. And uh, just remember, where did we come from? It's a profound and provocative question. And we attempt to add information for you to be able to consider this life-changing, life-changing question. The answer is life-changing. Apes, aliens, or Adam, where do we come from? I'm John Adolfi. This is the Lost World Museum, and we'll see you again on another live, and we've got about 1,100 videos on our channel. Have a great time. See you guys later.